It's week nine, and now we need to start making this reef tank look a lot more like a fish tank. Let's go. So last week in video eight, we added so many corals with the help of Shane Danger from Sustainable Reefs. Hello. And throughout the last week, we've been testing our water parameters daily to really fine tune our main calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium levels. And so far, so good. With the help of our dosing pump and the Coral Essentials Primary Care range, everything is on cruise control for us. This gives us a perfect opportunity to add some more fish to the 12 week reef. In every good reef tank, there's an awesome fish tank. In week five, after we got the tank wet, we also added a good amount of pre-seeded bio blocks packed full of beneficial bacteria and some cleanup crew. In week six, we added our first fish, Benny the Blenny and since then, a bunch of corals. Now, all these living organisms, they produce waste. And yes, that also includes corals. As you can see, we've intentionally added more and more to the aquarium. But the key word to remember here is small weekly additions have gotten us to the stage of now being able to add more fish. So fish eat more, fish poo more, and fish cause mess around our tank. So we're a little more careful when adding larger amounts of fish and we need to make sure that the time is right. That time, my 12 week reefers, is today. Before purchasing your fish, you should always first research into their unique living conditions and their place on the reef. Remember in video two, we learned that all the world's oceans are connected. So parameters won't change. However, other factors we look out for are their potential size, their temperament, their sex and if they eat or nibble on our little corals. Be sure to have some form of an idea before you go fish shopping. Our 12 week reef is two foot squared and it holds approximately 260 liters. So these fish can't be too big. We do love our corals. So we need to make sure our fish are coral friendly. Lucky for us, we thought ahead before we built our aquascape and we knew we wanted a ledge style reef with heaps of hardy holes so we can get some interesting life and clean up crew cruising around these rock structures. So with that said, I think we're ready to go out shopping and see what's out there. Time for some fish. I just need a thinking chair. Thanks, Angry Steve. <laughs> All right, time to choose what fish I want in this tank. Nay, stripes. Whoa, that would be insane. I just don't know if it would work in our 12 week reef. I know, I'll send Anthony from Delua a message. No way, man, not with corals. I'll swing past so we can go shopping together. Okay, how far off are you? That's a fish. Oh my God, oh, how long have you been there? So before we go shopping, we need to talk about some maintenance and some uh, cleaning up of the tank here. You got corals on the floor. What? Probably because of the high flow. We'll put it back on the rock structure today, but then I'll put you in touch with a maintenance guy. Now that the 12 week reef is quite mature, he can give you heaps more tips and some more advanced knowledge as well. Yeah, sick. That'd be awesome. Let the party begin. Pretty much anything here would work in the 12 week reef. It's just up to you which one catches your fancy. I love the look of these yellow ones up top here. Do you know what they're called? Yellow, uh, yellow. Ass they're assessive flavissimus. Yellow assessors. Uh, thanks, dude. All right, they're we'll, great. We'll back up a few of these guys. Yeah. Whoa, look at this spiky guy here with the big red tail. What's that? Uh, I know it's a fire fish, fire goby. That one's Nematiliotris magnifica, the magnificent fire goby. All right, we want the luminatus magnificent. <laughs> Bag that one up as well. Thanks, man. Maybe one more, or you can get a pair of those, but anything else catch your fancy? What about this like fire looking pine cone sort of looking guy at the back there? What's that called? I know it's a ras, but... That's Pseudocolinus hexatania, the six lane ras. Do you guys need help? You sound very confused. Oh, and you sound like you know a little bit about fish. I do. I'd love some help, come help. Cheers. Guys, I make LED lights and protein skimmers. I'm out of my depth here. I'm gonna make some coffee for you boys. Cool. All right, well, I'd love to bag up these fish and then I've got a, a 200 liter reef tank um, that I'd really like to put the fish in and I'd love you to help me out uh, and teach me a thing or two if that's all right. Sounds good, yeah, yeah. love to help. All right, help me bag out some fish first. Sure. Go 
guys. Coffees as promised. Enjoy. Thank you. Very necessary since we're filming past one in the morning. <laughs> Obviously. Look, dude, I um, don't really know who you are. I'm Brady, the aquarium guy. Sorry, I'm not a creep at the aquarium store. You might know me as Kai the fish guy. <laughs> on social media or lemon, if you've read some of my early articles from reef builders back in the day. These are our beautiful, colorful fish and do you want me to just kind of just straight drip acclimate them into the tank or? Acclimating your fish after you get them from the store is always a good idea, um, especially because you never know how different the parameters, the temperature, the salinity. Basically, you want to make sure that the water that the fish is in, in the bucket from the store, matches your aquarium before you put them in. Yeah. So depending on how different the parameters are, you want to drip acclimate them for as long as possible. Ideally, double the volume at the very minimum. Yeah, so with the drip system it's really simple you're just basically working off a gravity feed so you just want the inlet to be higher than your outlet in this case it should work pretty well yeah that looks really good i'm gonna have to suck on the end of this thing aren't I? get it started all salty yeah there you go so you can set a timer or you can just use a visual method of checking the water volume because the water that you currently have in the bucket is about slightly lower than half the other way of acclimating your fish aside from the drip method is the what i call the little pour into the bag method. Yep, that's what uh, most people do. Yeah, in which case I'll just take a cup of water, pour it into the bag, leave it for like 10, 15 minutes and then do it again until the fishes are more or less acclimated. All right, so I know that you're an ichthyologist. What does a day in your life, work life actually look like? So an ichthyologist basically is just someone who studies fishes and there are many different types of ichthyologists. Specifically, I am a taxonomist, so I name and describe new species of fishes. So I'm more of an evolutionary biologist with a focus on fishes. You're in the naming of fishes. Like, have you actually named any species yourself? Yeah, I've named 25 new species of fishes since um, I started. As a taxonomist, I get to pick the names of um, the, the fishes that I work with. And oftentimes I try to be a bit creative with it just to, you know, get people interested in taxonomy, especially younger generations who might not know what taxonomy is. Yep. So I've named the fish after uh, Wakanda, the fictional nation from <laughs> yeah. the Black Panther series. Yeah, yeah. I've named the fish after tequila. I've named the fish after shapes, uh, names of people, places that they've come from. But I also have, you know, um, a repertoire of species that are named after traditional descriptive characters that the fish possess. That's so cool that that's what you're involved in. That's, that blows my mind that you've named 25 species. Yeah, no, it's, it blows my mind too. Actually, speaking of which, I heard a myth about you uh -oh. specifically. A myth. A myth. I don't know. Well, we'll test it today. That okay. I can open a, an encyclopedia of fish, point to any fish in that book, and you'll know the name. Well, let's, uh, let's give it a go. Well, do you happen to have... I happen to have an encyclopedia here. Go pre cook. Here's one I prepared earlier. Why? This is not planned. This is completely <laughs> spontaneous. I don't know what he's going to open. I have no idea. <laughs> All right. Mythbusters. Let's try and get three. Number one. This that's, purple boy right here. That's Chrysiptera tapo. That's it. Chrysip tapo. <laughs> there we go. Chrysiptera tapo. That's, that's one for three. I'm impressed. Number two. Ah, that's a very iconic one. That's Centropagia lauricula. That's the flame angel fish. Oh my God. All right, that's two for two. I'm, I'm shaking, I'm quaking. <laughs> my entire reputation is on this table. All right. This beautiful fish right here. That's Chorus Formosa. Yes! <laughs> no. No? Mm. It could be, it's just... Yeah, that, that's the wrong name. It should be Chorus Formosa. So it's Formosa and Chorus. And oh, yeah, yeah, The no, species name should be Chorus Formosa. Anyway, it, I don't know why it's Freire. I think it's a synonym, but it's too complicated. Explaining what actually, synonyms are. So is. the book is wrong. The book's wrong, because it book's says wrong. there. So it's four out of three. Because he said chorus foremost. I cracked that Scott Michael, who's actually a good friend of mine, just don't. <laughs> <laughs> no way. No way. Yeah. That is myth busted. busted. <laughs> oh, Where's the myth proof? Proved. Myth proved. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's been 30 minutes. Time to put our fish in the 12 week reef. Is it good though? Is it a good one? I'm just going to, I guess, put him in with the net. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, there are other fishes like angels and butterflies where their dorsal fin spines are a bit more pronounced, in which case plastic container would work better. Just because sometimes they get they tend to get stuck in the nets and stuff. So what's this one? The ninja fish or this is the assassin? Assessor. 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 I like mine better. Maybe I should become a taxonomist. Whoa, we got a jumper. We got a live one. 
All right, and that is the um, the magnificent firefish or the red firefish, red fire goby. Wow, look at that! The color is insane, and the lights bring it out so much more. It's got like an oh, yeah. it's got like an angry eye. They're so beautiful. They're one of my favorite fishes. Dude, I'm so happy with that. That does that's doing exactly what I thought it would. Benny the Blenny, he's not gonna bully them or anything like that. No, he'll just live on the rockscape and continue eating his algae and. Peace. I get happier and happier with this reef tank every single week that we're in here working on it. You're into your photography and stuff like that as well. Where can people find you? You can look me up on my socials, Twitter and Instagram, at Kyle the Fish Guy. The handles are the same across all my platforms. I post a lot about my research, um, the photos that I take, uh, the adventures that I go on. I am also really interested in wildlife photography, so I do more than just fishes, but mostly I communicate my love for fishes, um, especially my research. Kai the fish guy. On all socials. Kai the fish guy. Thanks so much for your help, so dude. Much, is that a wrap? Done. So much life. The 12 week reef is bussin'. So let's recap video nine. We added three new fishes today, two yellow assessors and one fire goby. Remember, this is already week nine and we've been slowly adding livestock week by week to get to this point, we chose these fishes based on listening to the expert Dr. E. Kai Teet, and we helped him by clearly defining what we wanted to achieve. He taught us the proper techniques and the time needed for correct acclimation. Next week is week 10, and we get onto more sophisticated reefing topics such as advanced dosing schedules, nutrients, and their effects on your aquarium. And as an extra surprise, we get into some maintenance hacks. See you then. <clears throat> ready? 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 Am I still there? <laughs> I can I can squeeze in more. I'm out of here. I seem a bit rude. Like if I break the thing, it might seem a bit. You're like I'm out now. Yeah. Working the 12 week read. We pretty much anything here would. <laughs> Okay, okay, so that's a ventriloquist. <laughs> that's no! Anthony, what? How long have you been there? Is that Dolby? Is that Dolby? That's Ambly Iliotris Wheeleri. <laughs> Did I get it right? No! <laughs> God damn it. Right, let's, give it one. let's give him that one. Good tata. With our fish, so that they're coral flint flendly. <laughs> Before we build our aquascape. <laughs> uh.